Welcome to the week one pickums for the Shaman division of VDL. Today I'm here with a gamer person and record man. You guys want to say hi? Hello, hello. Oh, Tyler, you literally, right there. I was going to say, you literally talked over him. <laughs> I, 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 we didn't have like a countdown of who's gonna get first. <laughs> I know. Uh, so yeah, we're we're bringing the shaman power rankings today. So we're just gonna hop right into it. We're on a little bit of a time crunch. So power rankings. You mean pickums? Pickums. We're doing pickums. Pickums. Uh, so our first matchup is Plays for Days versus Shadow Knight. Now this matchup is looking a little rough, just based on speed tiers alone. Plays for Days team is just so much faster, and actually the three Pokemon that are faster are probably the three most threatening Pokemon. Just like Kilowattrel has no immunity, right? There's no ground type on the other side. Yeah. And the things just that... Spam, Hurricane, and Electric. Well, it actually can't go for Hurricane because of Bramblegast with Wind Rider. It has to go Air Slash. Oh, that's true. Um, And then... Lycanroc goes crazy with rock type moves and then like psychic fangs for Como O and close combat for Basiodon just goes absolutely insane. And then Inteleon with ice coverage goes crazy as well. So like and all three of those are just naturally faster than Shadow Knight's entire team. I feel like if Shadow Knight had Sun here, it would just go absolutely it it would it would make it this matchup a lot more even, I think. Yeah, and he can set up Manual Sun. Unfortunately, though, Grimmsnarl does not learn Sunny Day. Oh. So, I mean, there's other things that can set it up. Like, Venusaur can set it up for itself. I think Rotom gets it. I mean, you know, there's other things, but nothing wants to do that necessarily. It makes it, you know, it's just a wasted turn. Yeah, there's not much you can do when you have to waste a turn, especially with, like, three faster Pokemon on the field. And Plays for Days like, has fantastic priority, too. I mean, I don't necessarily think Scizor comes this week, but it does get Bullet Punch, and then a Cell Rock on Lycanroc is also just insane. Oh, yeah. So even if that, like, Gouging Fire gets set up, or that Venusaur, you know, is in the sun with a Chlor or uh, with a growth up, I mean, you can still take it out pretty easily. I also think, like, uh, Choice Specs Volcanium looks kind of amazing outside of, like, the Como. That's, like, the only switch in. Oh, yeah. It's team it just go messes the crazy. <laughs> So yeah, I think overall this one goes to uh, to plays for days. The the speed tiers on top of just the overall typings of those fast Pokemon make it really hard for Shadow Knight. I think if he goes just plays for days, because just goes fully like hyper offense, it just it rips the team apart. Yeah, Kamomo is the only like really good Pokemon here for Shadow Knight. Everything else gets countered good. Yeah, and then even then like Kilowattrel with Air Slash and then Psychic Fangs from like Rock will do a ton. Yeah, even even their counters is Kamomo and. Well, you said they kill a watch, so even the Annihilate, the Malawita down there. Yeah, and I was even thinking, like, Intimidate Quillfish could stop Lycanroc, but Annihilate benefits from that as well, so... Could with the, with the yeah. fire. So, you know, like, it's just... It's, so yeah. It's, it is rough all around. Yeah, this is not going to be a nice place for days. I don't even know what they would do here. Yeah, because like I said, it, you can't set up with uh, Gouging Fire. Um, I guess, like, a... Uh, Commonium or not Commonium Z, um what's the equivalent? Oh uh it's Clinger Soul. Uh Clinger Soul, yeah. Could be, I guess, like semi threatening, but uh again, like yeah. priority with like bullet punch would do a lot and I think defensively he has checks to combo like Annihilate, I think defensively does a pretty good job of covering it. Yeah, it does very well. Oh, yeah. Next up we have Wolf versus Aryan, and Iron Valiant goes absolutely insane against this team fighting and fairy coverage just destroys it the one to two answers being metagross and toxapex but i think there's pretty good ways to uh to wear those down but on the flip side yeah, you just bring go lurk bring go what go lurk go lurk yeah and then just eat a knockoff okay <laughs> <laughs> it's over i think curum though on uh Ari inside also just looks amazing uh, with like, I would probably say like Choice Scarf just because of the speed difference, but that's something that obviously they can mess with. Now that I look at it a little more, I think uh, Noivern actually does do pretty good here too. Terranormal Boom Burst will be very scary if that Golurk gets removed. Yeah, and the speed tier is really nice to have too. It just kind of outspeeds everything. Same thing with uh, Spectre when it just starts getting out of hand. If like... Umbreon and... Is that, is that Dunsparce? That is Dunsparce, yeah. 
yeah if that gets off the field too and the thing is i think it can i don't know if it just go crazy i don't know if spectator comes because those two are such good checks to it those aren't yeah. something that like spectrier can get weakened and then break like those things have to be removed for spectrier to do anything that is true and i think generally umbreon looks very good this week as well yeah because there's no fighting that yeah and the fairy yeah. type is a like co-fairy the biggest yeah, threat to it is like just strong probably fighting moves like hammer arm from metagross would be like its biggest concern in terms of yeah, super effective probably. damage probably maybe electivire it's some fighting move Up Specs sure. doesn't do awful but there is also pretty good uh, like ground coverage on some pokemon there to just uh hit it really hard but like on without that like in mind it kind of just walls like Iron Valley to an extent and some other some other Pokemon here. There's not one side of this that I think really distinctly is going to win because like they both have very good offensive threats but also have like relative checks to them. Like like I said, Iron Valley can get checked by Toxapex or or Metagross, and then Curum can get checked by uh isn't that Terra Steel Blastoise? Or am I wrong? I have no idea. I don't have the other dark phone help. Uh it is uh no, it's Terra, Water, Ice, and Dark. Okay, never mind. I take that back. Then Kyurem kind of goes crazy. Kyurem's only checked by its speed yeah. more than anything. Yeah, I agree there. And I mean, Spadef Umbreon can probably take some hits, but then, you know, you gotta, I don't know, because Spadef looks great, but then Fizdev also isn't, like, horrible here, so. I think the Metagross guy's insane here. At the right opportunity, like, maybe send him with agility or oh, something. Oh, yeah, agility's crazy. Yeah. I think it would just have to weaken the Blastoise a bit first, if it doesn't use its Terra. Yeah. Because I think Terra Dark would... You no, know, Terra on Blastoise is not good this week. Yeah, not I don't great. think so. And Raichu uh, is alright, but I'm just not, like, sold on it in this matchup. Uh, I don't see... Does it got the Terra Ice, oh, at least? It does not have Terra Ice. It's Terra yeah. Water, though, I think, right? I uh, know. no, it's it's uh, Fairy and Fighting. How do you the... make your... I mean, it gets Surf. It gets Surf. Yeah. So, I would have at least had that going on, but uh, yeah, I think yeah. not having that Ice Terra is kind of huge here. I'm not going to lie. Because that just kind of lets you hit everything. Yeah, you don't want to go Fairy because then Metagross just bullet yeah. punches you, and then but without that, if you had Ice... I mean, either way, Ice would still bullet punch you, but like... Yeah. yeah. Even like Water wouldn't be too bad. Now that I'm looking at it. Water would probably be better than anything else. Yeah, those surfs are going to hit hard. Unfortunately, but... though, that's not the case. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, that is not the case. Who do you guys think wins this one? Like, I, I'm i leaning towards Aryan. I was also Sorry. leading there. I just, yeah. I don't think Wolf has the defensive counterplay. I think... He's got the Umbreon, but that's it. Yeah, with those, like, speedy Pokemon and then just Kyurem going in, I think Aryan does have an advantage here. Next up, we have Fluky versus Kyle. And immediately, Iron Bundle just rips this team to shreds. There is one check, which is Slowking. I think it can take like two. I, I think it's three KO'd by Freeze Dry. But outside of that, I don't see a switch in. Um, yeah, I don't see one either. There's only three Pokemon that aren't weak to something that Iron Bundle has. Weezing, Zoroark, That's... and Bear Tech. Oh, then there's more than... Because Weezing, yeah, Weezing, Sloking, we freeze Jack, so yeah. I mean, we, can we really count yeah, Zoroark, though? Zoroark will die to a, an icy wind. <laughs> it's going to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah, not it's looking good. Easy. And the thing is, the one check in Sloking doesn't look that good into the rest of Kyle's team. Samurott beats it. Sceptile beats it. I mean, shit, Pinkurchin beats it. Yeah, I was going to say, Pinkurchin just plays such a huge role in this matchup i think and then gardevoir can come in trace regenerator like it just it doesn't look good here at all yeah there is there is one thing i would look out for here though is if he sets up the pincurch and that could help out the iron treads over there we were talking and about that a little bit beforehand but both iron moth and bundle out speed it in electric terrain that is that is a good advantage actually yeah. so they they would have to be choice scarfed in the terrain to really yeah, like outspeed and I, I assume like a volt switch would probably do a lot to, to bundle at that point but i mean if that's your counter yeah yeah this is a difficult match of a fluke key yeah this is a very very hard match they can run misty terrain on wheezing to try to prevent the electric terrain but like 
even then, the bundle does not need Electro Terrain necessarily to go crazy here. Oh yeah, absolutely. And Weezing just has a really bad like spinef in general, so it can't really switch in and like get the chance to uh, just set up that Misty Train without just going down immediately. Just kind of rough. Champion still does crazy here though. It does crazy all the time, but yeah, it does. I think oh, if yeah. it gets an SD or if it weakens that Corviknight enough, it can do some crazy work here. But weakening that Corviknight is not going to be the easiest task either. It's it's not. I mean, they got a Thunderous there and a Flareon, but I don't know. And even how though like they're going to be like Garchomp wolves them both. That's what I was about to say. Even though there's Chempow and Bear Tick on the team, Garchomp looks fantastic. Yeah, it does look pretty damn good, man. Kyle just has so many threats against Flukey's team, and Kyle's honestly, team I... has threats generally. Yeah, that's that's true. I I can't see Kyle not taking this. I'm not gonna lie. All I'll say is it's gonna come down to lack of experience for Kyle because this is Kyle's first draft league. It's really his first venture into competitive Pokemon generally. So I think that is the only thing potentially holding him back in this uh, matchup. Because I'm not too familiar with Floop Keys. Like, I know he's a beginner. You know, we're, we're talking in the beginner division, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have you know competitive Pokemon knowledge. Yeah, could be his downfall here. But team wise, I would I would go with Kyle. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see how that match goes. Actually, I think this is going to be one of the best ones for uh, Shaman Division. Next up, we have Truck Judd versus Two Bloober. Two Bloopers team is generally pretty weak to fighting and ground moves, and it just so happens that Truck Judd has that exact type combination in Great Tusk. Yeah, that is kind of wild. Which just, it, it does do really good. If it gets a rapid spin off as well to get that speed up, it's it's over. I mean, even in his waves on Galvantula. That is something I totally overlooked. I think he has to be cautious, though, because of the Cinder Race for that. And Espeon. Yeah. Yeah, Magic Bounce and Court Trance, well. But I mean, like I said, Rapid Spin from Great Tusk is just a good move anyway, so he'll probably have it. So if, if the webs do get bounced back or, or Court changed back or whatever, not a huge deal. On the flip side, though, Shell Smash Cloister looks fantastic. I don't necessarily know when it's going to get the Shell Smash off, but it looks fantastic if it does. I think the yeah, only the only thing that would need on. to be removed beforehand would be um, Comfey because of Triage. Yeah, Cloister looks insane. I also think uh, Hisuian Electrode just has a pretty good matchup in it too. The only ground type being Great Tusk that I can hit with its Grass Stab. With the Terra and... Ice too, it's able to hit the Dragalgi, which would be its only counter outside of Terra. Yeah, absolutely. And it just kind of all switches all over this team and it's faster than everything. Yeah, Talonflame might be able to get one good hit off like a Gale Wings, but Gale Wings isn't even that good anymore. Most people just tend to run like Flame Body for, you know, burns and stuff because Talonflame's a little bit better defensively, just since the Gale Wings nerf. Oh, yeah. This looks like it's pretty even. Yeah, I do agree. Besides, like, the Great Tusk and then, like, the Electrode, you know, on, on either side, there's nothing that sticks out, like, too crazily to me. I mean, Primarina looks good. Yeah, if uh, something happens to that Electrode and Vileplume doesn't come, because Vileplume does shut it down pretty well. I Yeah, I don't yeah. have, like, a even, like, one over the other. This is relatively even you know both have their win cons i think that two bloober has a better opportunity to set up and sweep as compared to truck judd he doesn't really have a sweeper per se i mean meow scarada is kind of there but it doesn't have like a setup sweeper you could set up you know with talon flame you know like sword dance but nothing like you know shell smash cloister or, or dragon dance teeth are you know things like that yeah the only one that comes to mind is calm mind comfy that's the only one yeah, I don't think it looks that good this week either. Samazenta just <laughs> behemoth bashes it. What is the Terra yeah, though on Comfey? Does it have any like defensive use? Um, it's it is steel something. It's steel and ground. Ground, ground could be all right, but I, again, I don't think Comfey has like the greatest defense in the world. I'm pretty sure its defense is pretty below average. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it has, it has base 90 defense. Not like the yeah. worst in the world. But if it goes if, for the Terra Ground, it's then just weakening itself to, like, Vile Plume and stuff, which I don't think it can really touch. It gets Giga Drain, Draining Kiss, HP Ground, Calm Mind. Un unironically, Vile Plume is the comfy answer. Unironic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does look pretty good against that comp, then. I mean, I think it's, it can just kill it, though. I think here's just the game of, like, what are they going to bring versus what, what am I bringing for, like, what, really? 
because there's a lot of things that check each other but not quite other things totally agree there's no like i can't pick a distinct six that come on either side yeah everything for the most part looks good besides like two cannon that's about it <laughs> yeah yeah that is about it i think i mean maybe the dash bun but even then that's good against Miascarat and great does yeah and it can wish pass to the Zama. Yeah, I, I don't see one side having a clear advantage on the other. I think this is anyone's game. All right, next up we have Lord Arcanum versus Brit Bellina. This is an interesting matchup because Lord Arcanum's team is like semi-weak to fairy. And Brit Bellina has tons of fairy types. But then Iron Crown is just right there and it shuts most of them down. True, but then Vullaby. Vullaby. <laughs> And Skeldurge. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, Skeldurge is so good in this matchup. It's kind of crazy. Same thing with Galarian Slowking. Besides the um, Dragapult and, like, Donphan, I think it looks pretty good. It's hard because Lord Arcanum's team is so, like, good offensively this week compared to Britbolinus, who, like, isn't really that good offensively. Like, Baxcalibur's all right, but it's just so much slower. Like, Sneasler's going to blow it away, you know, speed-wise. And then Ogre Pond, kind of the same situation where, like, it can't hold the Choice Scarf. So, like, Choice Scarf, Zapdos with Brave Bird blows it out, you know, and then Sneasler again with Dire Claw and stuff like that. So, I think just Brit's team is going to get very overwhelmed. Yeah, Sneasler doesn't even need to run on Burden. It's just naturally faster than everything. And having those two speed tiers in Dragapult and uh, Sneasler is just going to be so huge. Yeah, and then the Psychic Terrain will block Ice Shard priority as well, so if, you know, Baxcalibur wants to come in and, like, revenge kill something, it can't even do that. We appreciate Palace one. No. It gets bopped by fighting oh. moves. Oh, please. Uh, Iron Crown does get Expanding Force too, so I can see that hitting super hard against Ripplina's team. Yeah, if it does, like, a speed boost booster energy with Psychic Terrain and Calm Mind, I... That's just, that's crazy with like, you know, the, the tycoon, tycoon cut or whatever the hell it's steel move is. Oh yeah. Like it just doesn't need anything else outside of that. I mean, if Skeletor just weakened enough. Volibee is going to have to put in work this week. Volibee is going to be carrying this team <laughs> so oh, hard until Rampardos comes out and head smashes it. No, no, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about because, that because okay. tell me why. Rampardo's head smash is goddamn near unresisted. It is not resisted, unfortunately. Just tank a ton. Just tank a ton. <laughs> tank a ton. Get earthquaked. That's kind of crazy. We might see uh, Bastion yeah, or uh, Rampardo's come the one week before it gets dropped because I'm pretty sure they already dropped it. Or at least we're talking oh. about dropping it. Yeah, I think just in general, I think Third Arcanum definitely has this matchup, like uh, in the bag. Absolutely. I don't think Brit Bellina's defensive Pokemon can withstand, a, you know, just the, the continuous onslaught of powerful attacks like Shadow Balls, Expanding Forces, Brave Birds, that sort of thing. I'm not going to say I believe. I believe in the bloodline, okay? Tom is the season one champion. He's clearly passed down the DNA to his girlfriend slash wife, I think. How, how does that work? <laughs> he passed down the DNA to his girlfriend. Don't you worry about that. Clearly he shared the knowledge, okay? Our last matchup is Legend Lamarcus versus Carp Cranium. Quagsire, you know, I was shitting on it a little bit in the power rankings. I was like, man, this thing's going to get overwhelmed being a hazard setter every week. Why does it go insane against Carp Cranium's team? Just absolutely wild. It shuts everything that's not the Sinister down. Did it get Toxic back? Yes, it is one of the Pokemon that has Toxic. Ooh, then yeah. That's, that's really stuff. good. It, it stops everything. You give it unaware so that Minior can't set up, and you're you're good to go. You just have to scare Sinistra, and then, like, you probably don't want to get Scald burned by Aloe, so. Yeah, and if Clefay was Magic Guard, then it kind of really stole it out. But, like, even, like, offensively, like, ground is really good here. Like, it just needs water move, ground move, recover, and toxic, and I think it's just absolutely amazing in this matchup. It doesn't even need to run hazards. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't run hazards this week with how much spin and stuff Carp Cranium has. Honestly, though, I think just the rock types don't even do half bad this week. No, I think the only problem with them is Quagsire, honestly, which the yeah. Glamora does get energy ball, but Quagsire is a Terra Cap as well and i believe it has terra poison which i don't think it would want to do that too early because rhyperior is there but late to middle game that's not a bad option for quagsire as well and it does get fairy as well which fairy looks pretty good yep. here too it is poison and fairy for terras yeah how does the other pokemon on the team look then latios goes crazy if incineroar 
isn't uh, around with Lesser oh, yeah, Purge. Absolutely. It just it, it breaks through everything. I think it's kind of the same situation with Brit's team where Carp Cranium just defensively cannot handle Legend Lamarcus's team. Like, as crazy it is, his Quagsire, which is a defensive Pokemon, puts on so much pressure to his team. It's insane. And what Quagsire doesn't, things like Heatran and Serena really did. And even Rotom looks fantastic here because the one ground type is weak to water. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's that's really rough. And then, like, I, I want to try to, like, look for upsides for Carp Cranium's team, but, like, his sweepers get shut down by Quagsire. Wow. You know, like, there's just... Sinister with Calm Mind gets shut down by Heatran. Like, I, there's just nothing I can see that breaks through Legend Lamarcus's team. I'm, I'm really struggling to see it. Even, like, Boom Burst, Throat Spray, Toxtricity... Um, I don't think we'll be able to, yeah, to break through Quag. Unaware just lets it live all those. Yeah, even even like, with Throat Spray, you got unaware. Boomers. Yeah. And then even if it runs out of recovers, uh, Wish Pass from Florgis is there, and Florgis doesn't look bad here at all either. I can definitely see a lot of wishes coming through for Carp's team anyway. If if they're not like able to take so many hits defensively, they kind of just have to keep Don't. themselves going with like wishes and trying to keep themselves in the game, which is going to be really rough either way. But I think the one way Carp can possibly like start to get a an advantage in this matchup is just hazard stacking. I think if they, they continue to put hazard pressure on Legend Lamarcus, that maybe things can, you know, start to get weakened. But Latios and Rotom are both immune to spikes. So, and then I think Serena doesn't look horrible here so i mean that's like the one win con is just weakening them enough with with hazards to allow something to break the, in the end game but i i don't know yeah it's really rough the more is the best offensive pokemon and it's just so Austin. slow comparatively to everything else unfortunately this team is just slow and they can't really compare to the like 125 110 that uh that lamarcus has for speed other than like reggie lucky but even then that just gets shut down by quagsire which it, it's crazy yeah it's so crazy <laughs> yeah but yeah i think uh, i think we're all kind of a unanimous here that legend lamarcus is yep. probably gonna win this one i would love to see carp get this team you know some changes and really like it's there the the foundation is there you just need something to take advantage of all of these hazards that you have just something fast that hits super hard you know what i'm gonna take a minute and i'm even gonna look at the draft board throw roaring moon on this team that honestly just th throw roaring moon or yeah, palafin on this team yeah there is no there isn't no there isn't i was looking at dark yeah or even like palafin just something that can hit hard to abuse those spikes your team would tremendously love he was like iron boulder too not gonna lie well actually not really another rock? we don't we don't yeah we don't need another rock <laughs> i just thought of that like even like salamans blaziken yeah i was gonna say, yeah i was looking at blaziken but uh but yeah i think that is about it for the shaman week one pickums did you guys have anything else you wanted to add no good luck to all of you you're my little shaman kids personally i'm actually really excited to see a lot of these games and see how they go oh absolutely i am more excited for this division than any other division like advanced yeah, is going to be I cool do. to see some of the tech and stuff that comes but i want to see these begin like from week one compared to week eight and see how much they've grown and improved that is going to be so cool to see yeah absolutely i i'm very very excited to see how this goes all right well if you enjoyed be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the vdl season three content and i will see you guys all later peace